Welcome to Module 1, Asthma, the Basics. In this module, you will learn what asthma is, what effective control of asthma looks like, the difference between controller and reliever medicines, and the importance of flu shots. Asthma involves three main changes to the small airways. On the left is a healthy small airway. The right illustration shows the asthma triad. The first is bronchoconstriction, as smooth muscles tighten in response to a trigger. And within the airway, the second change is inflammation, or swelling, and the third change is mucus production. This triad happens in tens of thousands of small airways throughout the lungs. The end result is that it takes more work and takes longer to breathe out. This is known as airways obstruction. As we'll see later, this problem can be partially corrected or reversed with an inhaled bronchodilator or rescue medicine. That's why asthma is also defined as reversible airways obstruction. Asthma is a chronic disease that affects your ability to breathe normally. Asthma is a serious and sometimes scary condition that may require a visit to the emergency room and, if untreated, could lead to death. While asthma cannot be cured, it can be controlled. There is no cure, but asthma symptoms can be managed. Some children grow out of asthma. Others have to manage it for life. It's important to pay attention to asthma. If not treated properly, it can limit activities, lead to ER visits, and even cause death. Symptoms including airflow obstruction, blockage in the airways, tubes that take air in from the nose and mouth to the lungs, inflammation, swelling in the airways, Exaggerated bronchoconstrictor response. The muscles surrounding the tubes letting air in and out of the lungs tighten more than usual. Swelling narrows the airways, and it's hard to get air into and out of the lungs. Swelling can cause asthma symptoms such as wheezing, coughing, shortness of breath, or chest tightness. When the airways are narrowed, people begin wheezing, coughing, and experience shortness of breath or feel their chest tighten. Wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath are some of the most common symptoms of asthma. Waking at night with symptoms is also important, as it is a key sign of uncontrolled asthma. Exercise and colds, upper respiratory infections, are the most common non-allergic triggers, events that bring on asthma symptoms. Early symptoms vary from person to person and need to be taken seriously. Asthma triggers are a substance or condition that can cause airway inflammation or airway constriction, tightening that brings on asthma symptoms. Triggers cause narrowing by bronchoconstriction, swelling, and mucus production in the airways. There are various types of triggers that don't affect every person with asthma in the same way. It's important to know your specific asthma triggers so you can try to avoid them. Besides exercise and colds, triggers include but are not limited to dust mites, mold, cats, rodents, roaches, tobacco smoke, pollens, and strong chemical odors. It's important to know your or your child's triggers and develop a plan to keep away from them. Module 6 has additional information about allergic triggers, and Module 7 discusses non-allergic triggers. Be sure to view these modules for more information about asthma triggers. The flu, influenza A or B, is an especially dangerous asthma trigger. People with asthma and their housemates down to six months old should get an annual flu shot in October or November. The flu virus changes every year, which is why a new vaccine is needed every year. 
It is possible to effectively control asthma. You should reduce your exposure to triggers, use asthma medications regularly and as prescribed, monitor your asthma for signs of worsening, have a plan for what to do if asthma does get worse, and get regular follow-up medical care. When your asthma is well controlled, you should be as physically active as anyone. Go to school or work every day. Be free of most asthma symptoms like cough, wheezing, and shortness of breath. Sleep all night without being awakened by asthma problems. Avoid asthma attacks and the need to go to the emergency department or hospital. Minimal medication side effects. There are two types of medications. Controller, use daily or as directed by your health care provider. Reliever or rescue, use with symptoms. Good technique is essential. It's also important to take your medicines exactly as prescribed. Learn more about controller and reliever medicines in Module 2. Controller medicine keeps the asthma managed because it is taken regularly, not during an asthma attack. These medicines are called inhaled corticosteroids. Controller medicine works by gradually reducing the swelling on the inside of the small airways. People with persistent asthma should take a controller medicine even when they feel well. Persistent asthma is there most or all the time. Reliever rescue medicine, known as a bronchodilator, is used during an asthma attack to feel better quickly. There is an update to the National Asthma Guideline that came out in late 2020 and includes some changes that your provider should know about. People with asthma, even those who don't use a daily controller medicine, should take a controller medicine as well as their normal rescue medication at the first sign of a cold. People who take a daily controller medicine should not increase their dose or number of daily puffs at the first sign of a cold. People with more severe uncontrolled asthma should talk to their provider about possibly trying SMART therapy. This is a combination inhaler that includes an inhaled corticosteroid with a certain bronchodilator called formoterol. This works quickly like albuterol, which is the rescue medicine or bronchodilator typically used in the United States. This combination inhaler is used twice daily as the controller medicine, but also is used as a rescue medicine instead of albuterol, so there is only one inhaler to use. People with persistent asthma should have a written asthma action plan. Asthma action plans come from your health care provider and help you know what to do if you have asthma symptoms. You can learn more about asthma action plans in Module 4. Peak flow is useful when symptoms escalate quickly. You can use it to test if other spaces outside the home could be making asthma worse. School, work, child care, or another home. If done regularly, you can see if peak flow has changed even if symptoms seem the same. You need to know your personal best peak flow in order for this tool to be helpful when you're getting sick. There are also breathing techniques that can help if you're beginning to feel your asthma symptoms coming on. These are basically ways to slow and deepen your breathing. You can learn more about these in Module 10. It's important to pay attention to your asthma. You can monitor your asthma, observe asthma symptoms and track them. Use a peak flow meter and follow the asthma action plan from your health care provider. For caregivers of children with asthma, you should take time to communicate daily with your child about home, school, and child care triggers she has noticed. If your child is six years old or older, use a peak flow meter if in the past you don't always know when asthma is getting worse and attacks sneak up. Parents and their providers are partners in keeping the child healthy. If symptoms worsen or don't improve, you should call their provider. Talk with the provider about the medications being taken and how they're being taken. 
Always schedule and keep follow-up appointments. If you have questions about your or your child's asthma or its treatment, write them down before your visit to remember them. Widen your asthma team. Other important people you want on your asthma team besides you, your child, and your child's provider are your child's teachers and school nurses. Community health worker, PE teacher, child care center teachers and administrators, pharmacists, clinic nurses, and for some patients with severe asthma, specialists. Be sure to communicate with them. Key points from this module are Asthma involves changes to the small airways that make it hard to breathe. Asthma is a chronic disease that can be controlled. It's important for people with asthma and their families to get flu shots.